Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing and Reviews and How To. And on today's video, we're taking a look at a motherboard which sits in very nicely at the top end of the A620 chipset prices, but towards the bottom of the B650 chipset prices. This is the MSI B650 Gaming Plus Wi Fi. It's got some really cool features on it and it comes in at a really nice low price. So, if you are looking at building a new Ryzen based system on the AM5 platform and you don't want to spend the kind of cheapy money on the A620s, and you do want a little bit more for your money, but you don't want to go the whole hog into like the realms of the Tomahawks and Edge Wi-Fi's, etc. This is actually a very good shout, and it's got some really nice features on there. It misses out on some of the key features, such as PCI Express Gen 5, which kind of at the moment is a little bit of a mute point because there's basically no parts on the market that you can use with it. But it does have a really nice set of features, some really fast USB ports on there, and again, comes in at a really decent price. So today we're going to go through, do an unboxing, I'll show you what you get in the box, we'll go through a tour of the motherboard and the ports and the specifications, and then at the end of the video you can work out whether or not this is going to be suitable for your next budget build. So we'll start off with the packaging, the packaging is uh, very familiar if you've seen any of the modern gaming plus range from MSI, uh, whether it be Intel or AMD, packaging looks very simple. As it says there at the bottom, this is based on the AMD B650 chipset. And with that, we get PCI Express Gen 4. We also get DDR5 support. And of course, you do get some limited support for overclocking, although this probably isn't suitable for those of you looking at overclocking on Nitro. On the back of the box, it goes over some of the key features of the B650 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi, such as the extended heat sinks, the 2.5 gigabit ethernet, the built-in Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. We've got Lightning USB 20G, DDR5 support up to 7200 mega transfers per second, Gen 4 Lightning PCI Express, front USB Type C, and also M.2 Shield Frozzers. Also, it gives you specifications, give you a close up of that, and also an IO overview. So, next we'll take a look and see what we actually get inside the packaging, and it's uh, not a great deal, let's be honest. So there is a quick installation guide with some QR codes which you can scan. There is the European Union regulatory notice. There is a single, very lonely looking SATA cable. There are a pair of the M.2 lockers, although these are actually installed on the board already, so these are spares. You get a pair of Wi-Fi antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. And the last one, which is uh, somewhat of an oddity these days, this is a IO shield. Remember these? This is when they used to not be captive and actually attached to the motherboard. So these are the ones which you have to bend the prongs out of the way to fit inside your PC. This is one of the cost cutting measures. So we've still got all great features on the board, but they've cut some costs by not having an integrated IO shield. Okay, so let's start with a tour of the board. So starting up in this top left hand corner, we've got two 8 pin EPS connectors. You don't have to use both at the same time, but if you're using a higher end processor, then you might want to, to get the most out of it. This board, despite being somewhat budget, does actually have a decent VRM setup. So we've got a 12 plus two plus one setup here with 80 amp chokes. And also to back it up, there's some really nice big chunky heat sinks in here to keep those really nice and cool in operation. Moving down to the middle there, so we've got our AM5 socket. So this is for AM5 AMD processors only. The retention module is what we're used to seeing now for these new LGA type processors. And we've got the standard AM4 stroke AM5 mounting system here. So if you're maybe upgrading your system and you're using an existing AM4 cooler, there's a strong chance it's gonna fit. Moving across to the connectivity at the top here. So we have got a CPU header. There's also a pump header or AIO header, and also the first of our system fan headers. And there's six of these headers on the board in total, all of which supporting PWM and can all be controlled either in the BIOS or alternatively in MSI Center in the user scenario section, which we've done numerous videos on if you wanna check those out. Moving along from there, we've got a 12 volt RGB header. Next up, there is a five volt three pin addressable RGB header. So nice positioning there for AIOs and stuff, which might be at the top. Underneath that, we've got something which is an absolute godsend. That is our diagnostic DLED. So this will tell you if your CPU is okay, your RAM is okay, your graphics card is okay, or if you're booting. Those are really good for diagnosis, especially when you're doing your first build. The amount of people that we get on our Discord saying, my PC doesn't boot, and we have to say to them, right, what does your diagnostic LED say? And it's a real, real help and point you in the right direction should there be any type of failure. Next up, we've got a PWM header, again, another fan header. Then we've got our 24 pin main power connector. Moving across from there, we've got our four RAM slots. 
Generally, depending on what you're doing, it's going to work best with two sticks of RAM. That seems to be more favorable and you'll get the fastest speeds up to and including 7200 mega transfers per second is going to be somewhat processor dependent and also RAM dependent. If you're going with the four sticks, then you will get significantly less than that due to the way that the Ryzen memory controller works at the time of filming. Underneath that, USB front panel type C connection there. And underneath that, we've got four SATA ports. All of those will work regardless of what you plug in for M.2's PCI Express is completely separate. So no problems with uh, maybe losing a couple of ports if you install an M.2 drive. Moving across from there, so we've got the first of our M.2 slots. So this is PCI Express Gen 4 times 4 only supports NVMe drives, no SATA based M.2s in this one, unfortunately. And there's a quite a nice heat sink on there with also a thermal pad on the back to try and dissipate some of the heat from those hotter running drives. Although realistically, PCI Express Gen 4 times 4 doesn't really get that hot, so not entirely necessary, but it's nice that it's included at this price point. Underneath that, we've got our graphics card slot. So this is PCI Express Gen 4 times 16. So you're going to put an RTX 4090 in there. Not going to be any problem at all. And also there is a slightly oversized latch as well, just to make removal slightly easier. Moving across that, so we've got our B650 chipset there covered with a heatsink with the Gaming Plus logos on. And then moving back across, so we've got PCI Express Gen 3 times 1. And underneath that, there's PCI Express Gen 4 times 4 in a times 16 size slot, but only wired for times 4. This is actually really nice to see, especially if you're someone who's maybe is gaming and you want to do some video capture. Having PCI Express Gen 4 times 4 slot on there is going to be really good for some of those new 4K capture cards. Just up from there, we've got our second M.2 slot. Unfortunately, no heat sinks on this one included. You do get the little clips to hold down the drives. This again is PCI Express Gen 4 times 4. So again, still a nice fast port. Moving across that, so we've got our BIOS battery or CMOS battery. So if you need to reset your CMOS, remove that battery. We've done videos on that as well. There's also another PWM header down here for attaching fans, etc. You've got your front panel connections down the bottom here and also a speaker output. Just above that, there's another three pin, five volt addressable RGB header. And also you've got your JBAT1 header, which is for resetting the CMOS. Just along from that, we've got our USB front panel headers. So USB 3.0 type A's. Next to that, there's two USB 2.0 headers. Moving along from that, we have got another JRGB header. So that's a 12 volt RGB. Next to that, we've got a COM port header, should you need to use one. And then moving across that, you've got your J-Dash, which is for the MSI overclocking dashboard, which you can plug in. Then moving across that, you've got the JT-1, which is the Thunderbolt add-in port. So if you want to connect up there, you can do. And then finally, along the end there, we've got your front panel audio connection. This is using the Realtek ALC897 chipset, and you've got some Nishikon capacitors on there. And it's also all isolated as well to try and remove any background noise from your audio. Moving around to the back panel, so taking a look at the I.O., which you can see is all completely exposed. We do have a BIOS flashback button, and also there's an LED next to it, so you can see the progress of your BIOS flash. Next to that, we've got some outputs for visuals. So we've got HDMI and also DisplayPort, both of which will only work with processors with integrated graphics, uh, not the F-series, unfortunately. Next to that, Realtek 8125 2.5 gigabit LAN. Underneath that, USB 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabit per second ports. Then you've got another third one there. Underneath that, USB Type-C. That is a USB 3.2 Type-2, or times 2. That is the fastest one there, 20 gigabit per second. Actually quite unusual to see a fast port like that on a slightly more budget orientated motherboard. Next up, we've got a block of four USB 3.0s. So it's 3.2 Gen 1, 5 gigabit per second. Then we've got the SMA output connectors for your antennas for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. Finally, on the end, you've got the six analog outputs for your audio. This will support up to 7.1 surround sound if needed. So there you go. There is a overview of the MSI B650 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. I actually really like this board. I do like the Gaming Plus range in general. I think they offer a lot of value for money. If you don't want to spend those stratospheric prices on those really high-end motherboards, these, I feel, give a very nice compromise. And really, there isn't a great deal compromised. I would have liked to have seen another M.2 slot to give you the option for three drives, although I think two, realistically, these days is pretty much fine. The fact we've got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet and also Wi-Fi 6E 
means that we've got the best speeds possible really for this kind of level of motherboard. And also we've got four RAM slots, which sometimes you only get two on these more budget orientated boards. We've got USB type C front panel support and also the diagnostic DLEDs for working out what is going wrong. I think this is actually a really, really sound choice and it definitely gets my budget choice award. So there you go. That is an overview of the MSI B650 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. And don't forget, I'll put some affiliated links in the video description as well so you can check out local pricing to you. But I'm pretty sure you're going to find this is going to be very, very tempting indeed. So that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.